Hi everyone, today we're going to be making some butterfly canes. This tutorial will involve some basic knowledge of Skinner blending, so I'll link a tutorial on Skinner blending at the cards at the top. And later in this tutorial, I'll be showing y'all a neat little card trick to make some cool butterfly wing patterns. You'll be rewarded once you see your finished work with this step-by-step -step polymer clay tutorial. First, we're going to start off with the top wing and then the bottom wing, so let's get started. For this tutorial, you'll need 84 grams of black clay, 42 grams of white clay, 21 grams of teal, 21 grams of purple, and 42 grams of dark blue clay. Top wing, step one, create black and white striped loaf. Condition 14 grams of black clay and nine grams of white clay. Roll each color on the thickest setting of your pasta machine. For me, it's zero and stack on top of one another. Trim off the extra black clay, clean up the edges, cut it in half and stack them on top of one another to create an alternating pattern between black and white. Then take the extra black clay you trimmed off earlier and run it through the pasta machine's thin setting number 5, then place it over the white side of the loaf. Trim off the excess and clean up the sides. Step 2. Create gradient loaf. Condition 7 grams of black clay, 11 grams of each of the dark blue, purple, and teal clays, and 5.6 of the white clay. Feel free to switch out these colors with your own configurations. Create a Skinner blend arrangement and run it through your pasta machine until well blended. Fold the sheet in half for vertical stretching. Run it through the pasta machine, lowering the thickness setting a couple of times until you get it thin. On my machine, it's the fifth setting. Trim the end and make a gradient loaf with one inch folds. Trim off the excess clay. It should now look something like this. Step three, stack, cut, and pinch. Stretch the striped loaf so that it's a bit longer than the gradient loaf. This is to make the proportions more similar for the next step and place the striped loaf on top. The striped loaf should be set on the top of the lightest part of the gradient. Next, divide your loaf into five sections. Now we're going to use a neat little card trick. Take a thick old store credit card or rewards card and slowly press downward. It's okay if the clay resists or gets a bit distorted. That's what you want to happen. Try to go as far as you can without cutting all the way through. But if you cut all the way through, you can still reattach the pieces together. After that, pinch the gradient end so that you get more of a triangle. Now you have your completed top wing and it should look something like this. Bottom wing, step one, create gradient loaf. Condition seven grams of each white, black, teal, purple, and dark blue clay. Create a Skinner blend arrangement and run through your pasta machine until well blended. Fold the sheet in half, run it through the pasta machine, lowering the thickness setting a couple of times until you get to a thin setting like number five. Trim the end and make a gradient loaf with one inch folds. Trim off the excess clay. Then take an acrylic roller to flatten the loaf to about half a centimeter thick. Step two, add black and white layers. Condition 28 grams of black and 14 grams of white clay. Run a sheet of each using a thick level, like setting number zero of your pasta machine. Add the black sheet to the top of your gradient loaf, trim off the excess clay, and then add to the bottom side and trim off the excess clay. Next, add a white sheet to the side closest to the lighter end of the gradient. Then run a black sheet using a thin setting like five on your pasta machine and add it to the white layer. Now you should have something that looks like this. Step three, add white stripes. Next, set the side with the thin black layer against the tabletop. Run a sheet of white and black clay through setting zero of your pasta machine and cut out various widths. Then add a random pattern of white specks to the wings. Place white and black strips on top of the gradient loaf in your desired arrangement. Trim off the excess clay. Step four, card trick. Divide your loaf into six or seven sections. They can be even or vary in widths. 
You can make light marks on your loaf before doing this, then with the old card, slowly press down into the clay. Again, try to go as far as you can without cutting all the way through. Step 5. Make and add bullseye canes. Next, we're going to work on filling in the rest of the bottom wing. You should now have about 21 grams of each of your two darkest colors. You want to make a gradient with your darker colors that's offset about an inch. Run it through your pasta machine until well blended. Fold the sheet in half and continuously run it through the pasta machine, decreasing the thickness until you're at setting 5 or 6. Start rolling from lightest to darkest to create a bullseye cane. Reduce your bullseye cane and make two large pieces, two medium pieces, and three smaller pieces. There is no exact measurement for this. Then pinch your two largest canes to make a teardrop shape. Assemble the canes together into a bundle in no particular order, but have the teardrops point in the direction where you will make the point of a triangle. Compress the pieces together, pinch in the direction of the teardrop shapes to create a triangular cane. Next, compress the gradient loaf and make it curve slightly, and fit the two pieces together. Compress and reduce the cane to fuse the components together. Now your bottom wing should look something like this. After that, you have the option of slicing each of your wings in half to assemble into a full butterfly cane, but keeping them separate like this may give you more options for variations and make it easier to reduce to other sizes. I hope y'all enjoyed this tutorial and have lots of fun making your own cool butterfly wing patterns. Thank you for watching till the very end. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see y'all next time.